Hi, this is about scientific notation. In the textbook from OpenStax, there's an appendix about scientific notation. But in the other textbook, which is available, available for you in the Canvas, the TRO textbook, fourth edition, uh, there is a much gentler introduction to scientific notation uh, starting on page 12 of that PDF. Now, scientific notation is what we use when we want to write a very small number or a very large number because, uh, for example, this number here, there are so many zeros here. If you are making a measurement like this, it would be very easy to skip a zero or put an extra zero by accident. So the, um, the, the more convenient way to write this is to put down the actual uh, number of zeros or some, some number that would indicate the number of zeros. Now in this case, you, you, you write 1.4 times 10 to the 10th power. 10 to the 10th power means you take this dot and you move it to the right, the positive direction, 10 times. So if you move it to the right, you're going to skip over this 4 and then you're going to have 9 more spaces. You're going to fill those spaces with zeros. So this is nine zeros. Same thing when you write a small number like this here. This would be very easy to mess up by skipping a zero or adding a couple of zeros by accident. So you write one times ten to the negative something. So uh, here is one. Now there's an invisible dot right after the one because there is no dot in this number. Then uh, if you, this is 1 times 10 to the negative 15, meaning you've got to move that dot to the left 15 times, meaning you'll move it once right here, and then 14 more times, meaning there's going to be 14 zeros, and then, you, and then you, the, the dot lands right there. It's customary to put a zero before the dot also if there's no whole number before the dot. Okay. So we've got the decimal part and we've got the exponential part. Now, the thing with scientific notation that you have to remember is that the exponential part is very important. The decimal part is also very important. The most important part here is the exponential part because 1.2 is very different from 1.2 times 10 to the negative 10. 1.2 times 10 to the negative 10 might be the size of an atom in meters, but 1.2 in meters, that would be like half of your height in meters. So uh, the exponential part is very, very important. If you have the exponential part wrong, then you're wrong. <laughs> if you have the decimal part wrong, then you might be wrong or you might be just a little bit wrong. Uh, the exponential part, if, if that's wrong, you would be a lot wrong. The decimal part, if that's wrong, you, you would probably be just a little bit wrong. Okay, now uh, this decimal part, notice that this number is greater than 1. The decimal part is always going to be in between the numbers 1 and 10. Now let me uh, start writing for you over here. So the decimal part, the decimal part is always going to be between the numbers 1 and 10. So you could have like 1 times 10 to the fourth or 9.999 times 10 to the fourth, but you are never going to have 10 times 10 to the fourth, right? So the number can be 1, but it can't be 10. What I'm trying to say is it's going to be a single digit number followed by a dot, followed by whatever, however many digits you want. Right? You can never have two digits over here. That's not OK. The reason for that is um, we want to make sure that when you write scientific notation, everyone knows what you mean. Knows what you mean. Uh, so um, on your calculator, there's probably something called engineering notation, where it's OK to have uh, some number larger than 10 as, de as the, de the decimal part. But uh, in scientific notation, we want to make sure that uh, everyone knows what we mean. So we always assume that you're dealing with a single digit number, and then if necessary, a dot and then some other numbers. All right, so that's very important. It's between 1 and 10, not including 10. So um, that's how scientific notation works. Uh, there's a very cool thing about scientific notation that you're going to find ext extremely useful, and that is that the decimal part contains only significant digits. There are no digits that you write in the decimal part that are not significant. In other words, every decimal part number that you write is significant. For example, suppose 
you wanted to write this number in scientific notation. That would be 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Just 1. No zeros here because there's only one significant digit here. Do you see that? If you see this number, it, it automatically means that there's only one significant figure. What about this number? If you know the rules for significant figures, you know that there are three significant figures here. But uh, if you see this number, you don't have to know the rules for significant figures. There are three digits here. That means there are three significant figures. Because in scientific notation, you only write down the significant figures. You don't write down anything else. Okay? So that's something very useful about uh, scientific notation. Now, uh, it's important to know how to use your calculator properly when you're using uh, scientific notation. So let me get a fresh piece of paper here. And you need to look at your scientific calculator, the one that you're going to use on our quizzes and the final exam, and you need to figure out how to do scientific notation on there. For example, suppose you have this problem, 1.31 times 10 to the negative 38 uh, divided by 1, uh, maybe a 1 1.4 times 10 to the fifth. Okay? Suppose you wanted to do this problem on your calculator. There is a wrong way to do this, and there's a right way to do this. Let me show you the right way. You got to type 1.31, and then you have to type the EE -E key on your calculator. Your calculator might not have an EE -E key. If not, then you have to look for the EXP key. But your calculator might not have an EXP. If not, you got to look for the times 10 to the power of key. All right? The times 10 to the power of key. All right? You, you got to press one of these keys, and then you got to make your negative 38. On some calculators, to make negative 38, you type the negative key, and then the 3 and the 8. But on other calculators, you type 38, and then you type the plus minus key, all right? And that will give you negative 38. So you need to figure out what it, what, what is the case on your calculator, all right? Now. Um, I want to I want to call your attention to this button over here. Suppose you don't have a calculator that has an EE key. Suppose you don't have a calculator that has an EXP key. Suppose your calculator has a times 10 to the power of key. You got to make sure that you're looking at a times 10 to the power of key and you're not looking at the 10 to the X key. The 10 to the X key is not the same as the times 10 to the power of key. All right? If, if you have a 10 to the x key, and you don't have a times 10 to the power of key, then you probably have an EE key or an EXP key, which you should use, all right? Um, let me take a moment to show you some pictures of such keys. Uh, scientific calculator. Okay, this is the Google Scientific Calculator. It has an EXP key, so you go one point uh, here on the Google Cal how come this is not working? Here on the one, oh, here it is. 1.31 EXP. Now, the Google calculator uh, doesn't have a negative sign that I could see. So you have to type, thir uh, you have to type negative 38 like that, right? Usually, the minus sign is not the same as a negative sign, but on the Google Calculator, it is, right? So here we're using the EXP key, all right? And then, uh, let's, let me show you a different calculator. Here is a different calculator where there is no EXP key, but there's a times 10 to the power of key, right? You see that here? This is not times 10 to the N, the way I drew, but this is times 10 to the Y, all right? Notice that that key is very different from the... Uh, from the, from the, from the 10 to the x key. You see this 10 to the x key? It is not the same as the times 10 to the power of key. All right? You don't use the times 10 to the x key. So to use this calculator, 1.31 times 10 to the power of, now this has a plus minus key. So I have to type 38 first and then the plus minus key. That gives me 1.31 times 10 to the negative 38. Right now, let me let me show you another scientific calculator. Uh, images. All right, so here's a popular calculator that people like to buy, even though it's kind of expensive. Let's take a look at this guy here. 
Uh, can I get bigger? Yeah, let's zoom in on this guy. This is a fancy, uh, fancy calculator. Um, let's see. Notice that this guy, there is an EE -E button here. So, but it, the EE -E is on top of the X to the minus 1. So you've got to press the second button to access the top function here, EE. -E. Second EE. -E. That's how you would use this calculator. And this calculator also has a, a, a dedicated negative sign key. Uh, right here, negative. So you would you would type 1.31 second EE -E negative 38. That's how you would get 1.31 times 10 to the negative 38 on this calculator. All right. So there are all different kinds of calculators. You need to figure out what yours does or how yours works. Okay. And then you'll type. So you type 1.31 and whatever key you have, negative 38. And then you need to type the divide sign. And then you need to type 1.4. And then you need to type the EE -E button again, or the EXP, or the time is 10 to the power of key, wh wh whichever button yours, your, your calculator has. And then you got to type 5. All right? Let me show you what happens when you do that. Uh, let me use my calculator here. So this number, uh, divide, divide, where's the divide sign? Oh, here it is. Divide 1.4 uh, times 10 to the power of 5. And then I type equals, right? The answer is 9.3, uh, wait, how many significant figures? 2? Okay. The answer is 9.4 times 10 to the negative 44, right? So the answer is 9.4 times 10 to the negative 44. Notice this only has two significant figures. This has three. Therefore, the answer can only have two significant figures. This is the answer. Let me show you what happens if you do this the wrong way. Okay, I'm about to show you now the wrong way. This is how. This is the wrong way to use scientific notation on your calculator, and you can get the wrong answer. Sometimes you'll get the right answer, but in this particular problem, you would get the wrong answer using the wrong way. Okay, here we go. 1.31 times 10 to the power of negative uh, 38, all right? So, so far so good, divided by, this is the wrong way, okay? One, uh, wait, what was it, 1.4? 1.4 times 10 to the 5? 1.4 uh, times 10 to the fifth power equals uh, 9.4 times 10 to the negative 34th. Yeah, that's the answer. Not. That is not the answer. That answer is off by 10 to the 10th power. Look at this. Negative 34, negative, ne negative 44. That is the wrong answer. But I pressed all the right buttons, didn't I? 1.31 times 1, 0 to the power of negative 38 divide 1.4 times 1, 0 to the power of 5. No, that is the wrong way, and it gives you the wrong answer. Let me help you to understand why that method gives you the wrong answer. When you type those uh, keys, the, the way you see them written in a problem, the calculator thinks you mean this. That's what the calculator thinks you mean. And that is the answer to, it, it gives you this answer. But that's not what you meant. You meant this. So to get this answer, you need to use the scientific notation button. You can use parentheses to get this answer, but that just takes up time and it's more error prone. On a 30 minute quiz, you need to save all the time you can by practicing and having the skill of using the actual dedicated scientific notation buttons on your calculator. I mean, you paid for a scientific calculator, so you may as well use the dedicated scientific notation buttons that are provided for you there. Uh, if your calculator is giving you grief, bring it to office hours or uh, take a photo of your calculator and send it to me by email. Uh, and I will help you to figure out what are the proper keys to use and in what order, okay? Now, there's one more tricky thing when you're doing math with scientific notation. And the last tricky thing is addition and subtraction. Let me show you what I mean. I have a, a couple of pr tricky problems like this in the homework. 
Suppose you're trying to add these numbers, uh, 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd plus uh, 1.56 times 10 to the 20th, right? Suppose you're trying to add those numbers. You know that like if you were trying to add these numbers and they weren't scientific notation, if it was just 6.023 plus 1.56, you know that to add those numbers using significant figures, the rule is that if this one goes to this hundredths place and this one goes to the thousandths place, well, this is the rougher measurement. So the answer can only go to the hundredths place. So this is 7.583. Well, the answer can only go up to the 8 here. So the answer is actually just 7.58. But if this is scientific notation, how are you going to line these numbers up the way I did over here? What are you going to do? Uh, write the number out. So move the decimal place over 23 times. And so you have like 20 zeros over here. No, that would defeat the purpose of scientific, not scientific notation because it's so easy to mess up and skip a zero or something. And then what, are you going to write down this number over here like uh, this is uh, like a one, five, six, and then move the dot over 20 times, so write 18 zeros over here. Is that what you're gonna do? No, 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 no. That would take forever. Okay, so this is how you add and subtract using scientific notation while at the same time respecting the rules for, for significant figures. You see, this is 6.023 times 10 to 23rd, yeah? All right, so let me change colors here if I can. Uh, can I get like a blue or something? All right. So this six, this is in the 10 to the 23rd place. This zero, this is in the 10 to the 22nd place. This two, this is in the 10 to the 21st place. And this three, this is in the 10 to the 20th place. Those are the place values for these things. I don't know what the place values are called in English. 10 to the 20th might be like uh, 100 quadrillions place or something like that. But uh, it's just easier to use numbers uh, uh, when, you're, when you're this high, when you're this far from um, normal place values in everyday life. All right? What about this one? This one is in the 10 to the 20th place because this is something 1 point something times 10 to the 20th. This 5 is in the 10 to the 19th place. This 6 is in the 10 to the 18th place. All right? So the last decimal place here is 10 to the 18th. The last decimal place here is 10 to the 20th. What does this mean? This means this problem's answer can only go out to the 10 to the 20th place. All right? So I'm going to add this up all right, on the calculator using the scientific notation buttons. Okay? So here we go with the calculator. I'm going to go 6.023 EE or uh, this is my actual scientific notation button, uh, 23rd plus 1.56 scientific notation, 20 equals, right? Now this answer is 6.02456, so 6.02456 times 10 to the 23rd. Is that right? 6.02456E23, yes, that's right. Okay, so that means this guy right here is in the 10 to the 23rd place. This guy right here is in the 10 to the 22nd place. This guy right here is in the 10 to the 21st place. This guy right here is in the 10 to the 20th place. And that's the place that I stop at. That's the place that this number stopped at. That means that's the place that this number stops at. So I'm going to stop right here. The answer is 6.0. 24 times 10 to the 23rd. Is that right? Wrong! Because the next number is 5. 5 and above, give it a shove. So this number should actually be 6.025 times 10 to the 23rd. The answer is 6.025 times 10 to the 23rd. Was that too fast? If that was too fast, please just rewind and watch this again a couple of times. Ask some questions on the question and answer form and me or some smart aleck in the class will give you a good answer, okay? Thank you.